One day, one day, they will actually get started working on the basement down here and it won't look like I'm making videos in a human slaughterhouse. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Also, that metaphor got really dark. <laughs> Oh well, what's done is done. Let's talk about controlling audio on your stream because for some reason there are like two legitimate devices that can actually control inputs and outputs and both of them are severely limiting. We have the GoXLR which at its cheapest is $250 plus the cost of the mic and I mean it's just it's like two and a half years old. It's getting outdated. And we also have the Wave from Elgato which is phenomenal and affordable. The problem is you are stuck with a single mic. This is the only option. Enter the PC Panel Pro for $90 and the PC Panel Mini for $65. Two USB audio mixers that, to be honest, uh, ended up liking a lot more than I expected to. Now, super important disclosure, both of these were sent to me. I did not pay for them. However, no money was sent to me. I'm also not required to say anything positive. And the owner, the creator of PC Panel, uh, doesn't get to see this until you do. He, I, he doesn't get a review or a say or anything. This is gonna be my purely honest review. These things are, in their simplest form, USB audio controllers. You can use them to control Windows audio. You can directly plug these things into voice meter and OBS for direct control. And if you can get a little bit creative, you can use these to add extra faders to your current Go XLR or even add physical faders to your wave mic if that's something you've wanted for a while, which I know a lot of people have. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do all of that. But also let me tell you what these devices are not, because there's a reason this is so much cheaper than a Go XLR. This is not a cheaper Go XLR. They aren't the same device. I see a lot of people tweeting at me saying, is this the Go XLR killer? I even see a lot of videos on YouTube saying, this is the Go XLR killer. I know it's clickbait and the creator probably knows the difference. Not all of you do. It's very important that you know this. The Go XLR is more than just a controller. It's an audio interface, meaning you plug your microphone into it and it's packed full of expensive hardware. Things like preamps, inputs and outputs, converters, expensive VSTs, things that actually heavily impact the quality of your audio. This is just a controller, nothing more than USB on the back of it. You can't plug a microphone into this thing because if you could, probably cost like 250 bucks. Finally got like a legitimate top-down rig. It looks nice. No more of that like on a tripod slanted at an angle like all of our other top-down stuff has been. We're moving up in the world. Now you just have to see this really crappy Walmart table, which I'm gonna be honest is kind of growing on me. I think we might get this design like printed on a nice table. This like burned design. It got all burned from burn the boats, by the way. This isn't dirty. It's just, it's just burned. <laughs> We burned more than boats. Anyway, back to this thing. Four faders, five knobs. That's nine channels that you can control from that, which is already, like, I don't know why any streamer would need more than nine channels, but I'm for it. Plus, each of these knobs, also a button. So you can set those to be like mute buttons or solo buttons or whatever you want. It's a nice touch. The mini also just has four knobs, each of which also a button. Pretty simple. They both also come with a nice braided USB type C to USB type A cable, which is a good length and just it feels good. And that's pretty much everything in the box, except for the mini also comes with a little 3M strip because these are front facing. So it allows you to unscrew these little feet and instead stick it to your table, which again, just, I feel like they didn't have to include this, but they did. Thank you, PC panel. That's so nice. So, how does it work? Well, this was actually where the biggest surprise was because usually with lower cost devices, I don't wanna say cheap, lower cost devices like this where they skimp and where you realize you've been duped is in the software. And honestly, software was easy to find, easy to install and like really useful and easy to use. Like this video is more of a review than a tutorial because you don't need a tutorial. Like you can figure it out really easily. I'll still show you some cool stuff. But if you really want a tutorial, PC Panel uploaded their own that goes over every single thing in the software. So you're kind of set. Let's plug this in real quick. I'm gonna show you how this thing works. All right, it's plugged in. It lights up, the whole thing is RGB. Haven't mentioned that yet. Not super important. If you like it, that's great. If you don't, you turn it off. You open up the software, device is right there. Actually, I think you can plug in more than one at a time. I think you can stack these things and really have as many as you want. I don't know what the limit is. I only have these two. Here we go. Looks like if you have more than one plugged in, here's the Pro, here's the Mini, which I'd imagine these little slices or stripes indicates that you can add quite a few more. 
but let's just focus on these two. So let's say I want to adjust this fader here and make it control my music volume. Let's play some good music. I think a good place to start is the brand new Stream Beats genre. Just throwing that out there. Hi-Fi. You're gonna go to app volume. You're gonna click this little button. I look, Spotify's right here. Now it's off. Now it's on. Now it's off. Now it's on. There's even kind of a neat setting. If you have no need to turn it all the way down or maybe not even all the way up. In the settings, let's make the maximum volume 50% because it just you're streaming. You don't, I don't know, you don't need the volume at 100% ever. I don't know, you're weird, but. Now I turn it down. And you can see over there on the screen down here, when I turn it back up, it only goes up to 50%. Little, little quality of life move there. Let's bring it back up to 100 because we're not psychopaths. But we want to move on with the video here. I don't want this thing to keep playing music going into the same microphone as my voice. That causes a lot of problems in editing. So I'm going to take this knob. We're going to go to music control. We're going to make it play pause. And just like that, now the knob right above that fader is the play pause button. So I've got volume, I've got play. And I got pause. I hope you noticed in there, there's another setting up here for knob, because this is what controls what happens when you turn it. This is what controls what happens when you press it. And if I can just gush over one more thing here, one of the things that made me realize this is a well put together product is that as I move the fader, oftentimes you get shoddy software and the fader on the screen is gonna be a little bit behind. You can see the design is a little bit simple. It feels like cheap software, but as I move the fader, it moves immediately in real time as I move this fader. It's a very responsive software, and I just like that. The devices can also connect directly into voice meter and into OBS. For example, if you use voice meter, I've got it pulled up in the corner over here, you can see the integration is built right into it. So I can change this knob to be input one, the gain volume. And now, whatever you have set to go into input one, you can now control with the PC panel. It works the exact same way with OBS. However, before you get started with OBS, you do have to install the OBS WebSocket. And I know you're like, oh, what the heck is an OBS WebSocket? Well, PC Panel Pro did something kind of nice for you. If you go into the settings here and you click on OBS, they give you the link to directly download the WebSocket built into the software. So you click this link, you download, install the WebSocket, check the box that says OBS enabled there. And then when you're in your fader settings, you got your little OBS tab right there. It lets you choose from any of the audio tracks that you've got in OBS. So let's choose desktop audio because the other one, if I try to say it, will get me demonetized. Okay, and look at that. Easy peasy. Set scene. Can you have it change scenes? OBS, set scene, scene. Oh my gosh, you can change scenes. And apparently you can change scenes with it. <laughs> Hadn't actually tried that yet, so that's kind of neat. Or what I was originally gonna show you is you can mute sources. So now I've got the fader for turning it up and down and the button to just mute it entirely. As for the Wavelink and the Go XLR, this is where it gets a little bit more finicky, but it's still possible. Now, because the software to both of these devices is proprietary and self-contained, there's no API to hack into here. It's not like I can pull this fader down and the fader on the Go XLR also moves. You're not able to directly control the Wavelink and XLR software. However, there is a way to manage the volume of some of those things here. Let me explain. When the Go XLR or the Wavelink is controlling audio that is coming from the computer, for example, if you have teammates coming through Discord that connect to the Wavelink, or maybe you're playing music on your PC that connects to the music fader on the Go XLR. There are two volume controls. There's a volume control on the computer side, like when we were controlling Spotify earlier. There's Spotify on the fader. And then that signal, whatever volume you set it to, goes over to the Go XLR and you control it again over there. So while you can't actually hack into the Go XLR's volume, you can change how much is being sent to the Go XLR or the Wavelink in this situation. And it ends up giving you the exact same result. Let me show it to you real quick. So here in the Wavelink software, we've got our music and Spotify is playing directly into the music. It's not coming over my speakers anymore. It's first going directly into this software, which is then outputting directly into OBS over here, right? Now, what I would normally do is set a stream deck button to adjust these faders. You can see that controls the volume of the music. The problem is, Using buttons on a stream deck to control volume isn't as nice as having a physical fader. But now that my music is being routed out to a different device in the PC panel software, I can go to device volume and I can actually choose 
Wavelink music here. Now you see when I move the faders, it doesn't actually move the fader on the screen. It just controls how much volume is being sent to that fader to begin with. So it's adjusting the volume earlier in the signal chain before this gets to control it. So if I move this one down to 50%, and then I move this one down to 50%, you essentially now have music at about 25%. Does that make sense? You got two different faders both controlling the volume. So you keep these at 100% all the time and you make this the new volume fader for whichever channels you want to control with this thing. The same exact thing goes for a GoXLR. If you plug this thing into a PC that has a GoXLR plugged in, when you go to device volume, you'll see the GoXLR outputs all inside of here. But there's a lot to toy with on these things. They're a lot more powerful than I thought they'd be. I'm impressed. I'll link them down below in case you want to pick up one for yourself. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Also, if you want to talk with me about it more on a live setting, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday at my personal channel. Link to that in the description down below. Guys, I hope this helped. And as always, happy streaming.